All right. Thanks for coming out on somewhat short notice. And no file is not the ideal time, but wanted you guys to uh, have a chance to meet Travian. He literally just got in today, um, and then he's going to hit the road recruiting. So before we get busy with recruiting, wanted you guys to have a chance to visit with him. I'll talk about him here uh, in, a, in a second. But again, thanks for coming out. Um, like Steve said, just got back from the Southern Company Peach Bowl Challenge and had a fun time over there. And, Getting connect, getting to uh, connect with a bunch of coaches and visit for the last couple of days, and uh, sat with uh, Coach Spurrier and Dan Mullen and Urban Meyer and our wives at dinner last night, and then played with Tom O'Brien, the former NC State coach, today, and uh, our foursome included Dabo, Coach Sweeney. So we had a lot of fun on the course as well, and and uh, a great time for. For a great cause, all money going to charity, everything that Gary Stoken with uh, Peach Bowl and his group uh, touches is is amazing. So they've done amazing things uh, from from a charitable standpoint, and excited to be a part of that and, and contribute to it as well. Uh, finishing up everything academically this semester with our guys. Want to congratulate. We got 11 players that'll be graduating uh, this weekend. Proud of them. 11 players with eligibility remaining as well. So they'll play this season as a graduate of the University of South Carolina. So kudos to them and everyone uh, in our Doty Academic Center for what they're doing with our guys uh, as they come into graduation. I think exams are got proud of what our guys have done from that standpoint. Had all of our exit meetings uh, right after the spring game, and those went well uh, also. So our players get a chance to, to get away for a little bit now in the month of May if they want. A lot of them, they, they stay up here anyway. They, they tell me they don't want to go anywhere. They'd rather be here in Columbia anyway. So... Uh, uh, Want them to be able to get home if they can, though, and see their families for a little bit before they get back here uh, Memorial Day weekend. Our guys will come back, and then we'll start summer school that Tuesday after Memorial Day as well. But pleased about where we are right now and, and, um, and, and again, where we're, where we're headed. Eager to get out on the road and start the Gamecock Club circuit uh, tomorrow night up in Charlotte. So hope to see some of you guys up there at that one and, and throughout the state, as uh, our st state of South Carolina here over the next month as well. So can't wait to get out there and visit with so many great Gamecock fans as well. Uh, couldn't be more excited about having this guy here today as well. Uh, truly bringing him home. It's amazing how many text messages I've gotten from uh, former players, uh, of teammates of his, guys that played here when I was here, thanking me, excited. Uh, employees here at the University of South Carolina that knew Trave as a player and now as a coach that are thanking me for bringing him back and all that as well. So home run hire to be able to get him uh, back when our – uh, he's a great player here, as we know, great student, loves Carolina. He is uh, garnet and black through and through, was a great player here, and I know he's going to be an even better coach and recruiter for us as well. Uh, so much respect for him as a person when he was here as a player and I was an assistant coach, but then what he's done in his coaching career as well. I've got respect for the guys that they just when they decide to get in the coach and they don't want anything handed to them, they work for it. And he had a great career as a player, played in the NFL. Uh, so a lot of times guys, they maybe finish up playing in the NFL and they think they're just supposed to go right to the top in the coaching world. And, and he did, and he earned it, worked as a graduate assistant, worked at Albany State, went to Georgia State as an assistant coach, did a great job with the defensive line at Tulane, uh, last season as well. So great family. Uh, wife is a Gamecock also and former athlete here as well. So couldn't be more excited for us to bring him home and couldn't be more excited for Travian to come home as well. When our uh, previous assistant coach uh, left, there was one phone call I made and one phone call only, and it was to him. And I actually called him before we had a position open. When I thought there might be a position open, I called. Um, and I'm like, man, I'm sorry if I have to, if this thing doesn't happen, but I'm excited and, and want to reach out just to make sure that this is something you're interested in if this does happen. And when it happened, it took me about 15 seconds to pick up the phone and call him, Clayton and I. Met with him on a Zoom that afternoon, and uh, about five minutes after we got off the Zoom, I called him back and offered him the job, I guess. So just wanted to make sure, or I guess it was five, maybe a little bit longer. I'm not sure. It wasn't long. Just wanted to make sure I knew what, we, what this position, what I wanted out of this position, and uh, wanted Clayton to feel good with it as well, and he absolutely did. And that's what you know, Clayton and I said. We can talk to a bunch of people, but it's going to continue to come back to this guy every single time. And uh, 
Uh, we've got a great group of defensive linemen that he'll be coaching this upcoming season, and he's going to make them better. They've done some great things over the last couple of years, but he's going to take them uh, to a different level. He saw this program when the way it was built up from day one and, uh, and competing for championships, and, and he's going to uh, be a key, key part of us getting back to that as well. So excited about him being here. I'll let him visit with you here in a second before I sit down and bring him up. Any questions that you guys have about anything this Travian or the program in general. How about that, huh? All right. <laughs> Shane, did you, when you were here as an assistant and Travian was here as a player, did you say, you know, this guy has the makeup to be a really terrific coach one day? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I thought he'd be successful in whatever he did just because of his mentality. I mean, he was a guy that was all business all the time and, and uh, great work ethic, was a great student, um, academic All-SEC, right? All right, so a great student as well. But just I thought he was just very professional in everything that he did and uh, always had a lot of respect for him uh, because of the way that he played on the field, but the way he handled himself and took care of business off the field as well. Shane, we've seen over the last couple of hires that you've made, there's been some type of NFL background in, it, in, in with it. Is that just a coincidence, or how much did that also play into the decision to be able to bring him back home? I think it's uh, really it's coincidence. And in his case, whether he had played in the NFL or, or not wouldn't have made a difference. Um, I think it helps, certainly, because if when you when you talk about, okay, let's check all the boxes, what are you looking for in this hire, uh, he checks them all in regards to uh, we have a chance to upgrade in every every area of recruiting ties and personality and love of this place and played at a high level here in college as a player, uh, played in the NFL at the position he's going to be coaching um, and then has done a great job as a coach and as a recruiter already in his time. So, I mean, he checks all the boxes. The NFL's an added – you know, added a, a bonus without a doubt. But no, not necessarily uh, in the other hires as well. Um, you know, Sterling was, the, I guess, was the most recent hire, Sterling and Jody. And those were guys that I knew previously and, and had ties. And I knew they were great recruiters and great coaches. And, it, you know, it helped that they had been in the NFL. But it's not necessarily, a you know, a thing that I'm seeking when we're trying to make hires, trying to find the best person for the position at that time. Shane, two for you with Trayvon. You mentioned the recruiting aspect of it. What have you seen in the interview process or talking to people about him as a recruiter and to just the injury update? Is there any update to Jalen Nichols and the team? Yeah, recruiting-wise, I think he'll be great. Um, his local ties, you know, uh, being from this part of the country and then having worked at Georgia State and Albany State and recruiting this area and then being at Tulane and opening up more doors as well. Um, you know, a guy – when we – I knew him but as a player, but I hadn't really been around him as a coach, Colin. So making calls to people that had been around him and knew him and, and everything, I felt sounded great from a recruiting standpoint. And to me, it's easy to recruit to a place that you love. And I know he loves this place. And uh, he's he can he has a story because he went through and – uh, he went through what these guys that he's recruiting are going through. He's been there. And then he excelled and was able to reach all of his goals that all those guys he's going to be recruiting want to accomplish for sure. So he'll he'll kill it from that standpoint. Uh, Injury-wise, uh, Jalen specifically, as you guys saw in the spring game, suffered a you know pretty significant injury. Um, uh, he won't be ready for the beginning of the season, I'll say that. And, you know, optimistic that, that – uh, the, the recovery process will go well and we'll get him back um, hopefully you know before the season before the season is over but he won't be ready to start the season Shane uh, from your time you know working with with Travian what back when you were a coach here and you were a player Travian what was the one story that you saw stand out something from practice something from a game you know emotionally you know physically just anything that, that really stood out about his time as a player oh David you're killing me man um I wish I had a specific one. I should I should have thought about that one before I came in here. I really don't. You know, to me, I just kind of go back to, um, you know, just what was asked earlier, just the, the way he carried himself and his mindset and his demeanor and work ethic and then all that as well. He was a, a great leader on this on, on this football team and, and a guy that just has so much respect. You know, I sat with, like I said, I sat with Coach Spurrier and, Coach Meyer and Coach Mullen last night, and Coach Spurrier and I were talking about him as well, and, and he was excited that he was coming back um, as well. So got the respect of a lot of people, and there's a lot of moments that, that went into the respect that, he, that people have for him. And 
I'll, I'll have one, but I don't have one off the top of my head right now. Sorry. I'm fresh off the golf course today, but it's got other things on my mind. The putts we missed today. <laughs> Uh, kind of going the other way off the NFL thing, you know, he's coached at D2, he's coached Sunbelt, he's been in the NFL. How much is having a guy who's been at pretty much every level of the sport help with recruiting? I think great, um, you know, because to me, those um, – um, when, when you have every level, you're – you got to do a great job developing. And there's a lot of good players out there that maybe fall through the cracks and go to an Albany State that could be playing at a higher level or go to a Georgia State that could be playing in the SEC. Uh, Jordan Strong was just out there in the hallway, and and Jordan was at Georgia State when, when Travian was there. And, and I called Jordan about Trave during the process, and Jordan flat out said if it wasn't for this guy right here, he wouldn't have had the year that he had at Georgia State where he led the country in what sacks or tackles for loss or whatever it was. He's like, it was because of this guy. And, um, and um, so I think when you get in there and you develop guys at different levels, it certainly helps because you're now recruiting at the highest level as well. And you find ways to be resourceful as, uh, as well and find a way to make things work. And, in, in every which way. So he's at the top of the top right here in the SEC, and, and that experience is that he's, hit, he's had at other schools will do nothing but but help him. I think the same thing with Montario. Montario coached at a lower level and a, a lot of lower levels before we hired him here also, and uh, has done a great job with that. Um, you mentioned Trey's going out recruiting right after this. So what's kind of the process of getting someone up to speed that quickly, especially, you know, with spring practice already done, getting them integrated with the team and everything too? Yeah, it's a tough time right now just because you don't expect to have a position open on your staff after spring practice. Um, you know, you worry about the portal being open. You worry about uh, players leaving. You don't worry about coaches leaving in the portal. So that's disappointing to say the least. Um, but when you do bring a guy in like Trey, one, he's familiar with this place, so that helps without a doubt. He's not coming into a place that he doesn't know. He probably knows more about this place than I do from his time here as well. Uh, we've got some players that are still around, so he's able to connect with the players that, that are here. And then – and then he's able to hit the road recruiting. So he spent the day today, got in with this morning, and spent some time with Taylor Edwards this afternoon, just kind of getting caught up to speed on our personnel, the guys that we're recruiting, things like that as well. And then he's able to, then we'll be able to get him out on the road. So it's not an ideal time, Emily, but it's a slower time, if you will, because the players, for the most part, we're not practicing, classes are over. Uh, so it's not much happening other than just recruiting. You know, it's probably from a personal standpoint, it's a little bit tougher because normally a job comes open, a coach comes in January or February, and you got some time to get settled before spring practice and all that. It's a little bit of a different time. Schools are getting out and things like that as well. But it's uh, it's unique. But but uh, he'll hit the ground running and again when he goes out recruiting. He'll get familiar with the players, but he's already familiar with the place that he's working. It's not like he's coming to a new new spot that he doesn't know anything about. You guys have, I guess, cleared this last portal window. Um, well, I guess sort of incomplete in some ways. But as, as you've experienced that portion of, of the portal and, and seen what it's like and experiencing, what what are your thoughts on it and, and just kind of how, how things have, have gone for you guys that way? I feel good. Um, had 101 individual meetings the week after the spring game and sat every – met with every single player, you know, in my office and, and had open and honest conversations, which we're always going to have, you know, about their role here and are they happy and and where's their head at with things. And then there's open and honest conversations with guys that, you know, you kind of talk about where their role, wh what their role is right now at this point and, and what does it look like going forward. And I want every player that's in our program to enjoy the experience they have in our program and be able to you know, do well in school, graduate, win football games, play uh, at a high level. And if a guy feels like he be has a better opportunity to do that somewhere else, then we wish him well and we'll help in any way. But I thought the meetings were, were good. Um, and got, it showed we've got a lot of guys here in our program that love being a part of this program and love the direction of the program and, and love what we're doing right now. And, um, you know, couldn't be more excited about the group and and that's certainly, I'll be honest, I mean, that when that portal window's open, it's a, a long two weeks, if you will, because there's a lot happening. And, and you certainly, you want everybody to come back and you worry about getting phone calls and things like that. And being with some of those coaches the last couple of days at the golf thing, I mean, just sharing stories with them and hearing different things and things like that. It's a, it's a you know, 
odd, strange, new two weeks for all of us in a lot of ways, but uh, survived it. And, and at the same time, we're always going to do here in this program, make this a program that guys want to be a part of, that they know they're going to be coached really, really hard. And you guys have heard me say it before, be held accountable. It's going to be demanding, and it's not easy being a part of this program, but I uh, want guys that want to be here. And I feel like we've got a lot of them, though we do. Chan, I know you're pretty straight up with guys as far as when they're looking at other jobs and things like that. I guess what was kind of the timeline as far as when Jimmy kind of came to you all and you figured this might be something that you guys needed to fill and sort of how it all came together? It was probably two weeks ago this upcoming Thursday, so about 12 days ago. Um, Coach Kelly at LSU reached out to me. Said I knew he had an opening because their coach had left before spring practice, somebody that I had worked with at Oklahoma, as a matter of fact, um, to go to the NFL. And Coach Kelly hadn't finished the, the position, so he had reached out and said that he had an interest in just talking to Jimmy about it. And that was 12 days ago, I think they um, – and then it was about six days later, I guess, when when everything kind of came, you know, to a head. So that would have been – I think Thursday night I called Trav and Travian, and then Friday um, we were on a Zoom that afternoon, and um, and then Friday night kind of got everything uh, settled, finalized, whatever. Wanted to be respectful to you know Tulane and 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 do right by them as well because it's tough timing on that end as well, just like it was for us on losing a coach. But wanted to do right by them, you know, last weekend allow him to kind of settle things there. In Tulane on his time frame, on his time frame, and, and then getting here as quick as possible. 